I would like now to give the word to Bas Peters, who's going to talk about smart contracts and formal verification. Bas is also an associate professor here at the department at the, the Log and uh, Semantic Group, and Bas is a world expert in formal verification. So here's to you, Bas. Thank you, Claudio. This is on. People hear me? OK, thank you. So I start with a picture of a bridge. Just like for building bridges, uh, for, for building bridges, there are clear quality standards about how to build safe bridges. Uh, we do the same thing when building software. So when building software, we, have, we can start with unit testing, and it, this already allows us to catch a number of bugs. But if we really may want to make something as important as a bridge like this, then we want to use formal verification. So this is the very highest standard of um, certification we can get for a piece of software. So here's a picture of a, a distributed system. Um, if you look at uh, the way, so what we've seen in the previous talks, both uh, Jesper and Claudio, they've emphasized that uh, when doing modern crypto, you actually want to give a mathematical proof that your protocol is correct. Uh, if when mathematicians and cryptographers in, in particular uh, write down uh, arguments, then they give an informal argument, trusting that you can actually fill out all the tedious details if you are actually forced to do so. The problem is that uh, if you actually miss one of these tedious details, the whole thing breaks down. So it's important to actually write down all the tedious details. Fortunately, we as computer scientists, we know what to do when we're confronted with a tedious task. We use our computers. So we use computer proof assistance to actually fill in all these, um, these tedious details. Uh, as we've seen, the, um, uh, a blockchain is built up from a number of parts. And so the first thing we do is uh, we actually prove that several of these parts are actually secure. Uh, now, from this, we want to conclude that the whole uh, stack is actually secure. It's, it's well known in, or in cryptography that this doesn't just work. So we need to give a very, precise, a very precise class of proofs to make sure that we can actually compose the security and these correctness proofs. At the same time, in the programming language and type theory community, very similar tools are being developed. So what we're going to do in the center is to try and uh, put those two traditions together and actually build a framework so that we can use our uh, computer proofs uh, together with these composable security proofs. So that actually, in the end, if we have proved um, our algorithms to be secure, then we actually have, have a complete proof. And we actually know that the full stack is secure. Um, another part that's missing from uh, a cryptography paper is there uh, one only talks about an abstract uh, cryptography abstract cryptographic protocol, but in the end what we want to do is talk about an implementation. These computer proof systems actually include a programming language, a very high level mathematical programming language. So the first thing one does is write the protocol in this programming language and then actually prove something about this implementation. We can even go further and allow use this tool to refine the um, the uh, protocol in this language into a very efficient uh, implementation of the code. So having set the scene, I want to uh, go to some of the, uh, some of the specifics. Uh, some of the things we're doing in the, um, in the center, uh, as you can see, there's the uh, identity layer that Claudio has just talked about. Uh, one of the things we need there is new uh, cryptographic primitives. I give you a... Um, a, an artist impression of some of the mathematics that goes into this. So these are elliptic curves, but the elliptic curves are actually being used. They use uh, very abstract mathematics, and they, they cannot just be drawn, drawn like this. So what we need to do is, um, so if we teach these elliptic curves to our students, they actually need to take a number of mathematical courses before they actually at the level that they can actually uh, understand and work with these, uh, these elliptic curves. So what we now need to do is explain the computer all these steps and build up all these libraries and tools so that they can work with these, uh, these very abstract mathematical objects. So once this is done, so we uh, reduce these abstract mathematical objects all the way to the logic that we have there at the bottom. 
So this is a, a very long process, but we're getting better and better at doing these kind of things. Um, so we now have a project together with uh, Diego at the engineering department, who's an expert in actually the implementation of uh, these cryptographic primitives uh, to have a, a, a fully verified library for these cryptographic primitives, and they will be efficient. Uh, this is technology that's already uh, not, not our work, but, but we'll be working on building on libraries. They're already running in your browser. So if you're using the Firefox browser or the Chrome browser at the moment, then uh, you'd be using formally verified cryptographic primitives. And we're going to uh, expand on this, uh, this tradition. So this is uh, one of the areas that we, uh, we need to look at. So we actually need to develop quite advanced mathematics and reason about the implementation of this advanced mathematics. Uh, another issue that we want to look at, if you look at the, uh, the, the picture here, the, the consensus layer. So what we know how to do quite well at the moment in the uh, academic community is reason about one computer uh, working in isolation, reasoning about the programs running on that. But now there's a couple of new uh, ingredients that come into this, uh, into this game. So for one thing, we need to reason about computers that are spread all across the, uh, the globe. So this gives a whole new set of problems. Uh, at the same time, we need to reason about these uh, cryptographic primitives. So we need to reason about uh, having no problems, no, no hash collisions, for instance. This is a probabilistic, uh, a probabilistic um, a statement, so we need to re be able to reason about probabilities, but in a completely formal way. So that's another problem that we need to address. And finally, in this uh, cryptographic system, there's always an adversary around that tries to mess up whatever you're doing. So that's another thing where we need to um, use tools from the programming language research uh, to reason about these adversaries. So there are quite a few new ingredients in there, and we need to do basic research to better understand how to reason about uh, these settings. Uh, finally, there's a spe specification of the transla uh, transaction layer where we need to reason about state, and this is typically something that's done using abstract algebra, and we need to see whether the same methods actually work also in the blockchain setting. Now I want to go, so, so this was an explanation of what formal verification is. Now I want to go to the smart contract language. Uh, I need to, to explain, so this is the last part of the, as you can see in the picture, this is the last part of the, uh, what, what makes a blockchain. Um, so to explain what a smart contract is, I need to step back a bit. Uh, so the first generation of blockchains, that was the, the, the Bitcoin, of course. So there we have the, this was mainly used as, or still is mainly used as a cryptocurrency. Then people in the Ethereum project, they realized that actually the, the main working part of the uh, Bitcoin is the blockchain. So what we want to do is take that blockchain out, put a general programming language on top of that, and then we can write all kinds of financial contracts on top of the blockchain. So for instance, here you have an insurance that uh, uh, against your house burning down, and this can be formulated as a smart contract. And there are all kinds of other contracts like this you can actually, uh, actually write down. So one of the things people did was actually make a company on top of the blockchain. Uh, due to a subtle programming error, people could actually uh, clean out the whole company and there was a huge financial loss uh, due to these bugs. So the blockchain has been called the biggest uh, bug bounty program in existence. And so we need to be extremely careful now with the, uh, the third generation, uh, where we're trying to build a better Ethereum, um, there's a whole new uh, space to explore for us to design new uh, smart contract uh, languages. What is very imp uh, important is that we have a very clear meaning to these languages, a very clear semantics, and that our tools that we build, uh, the interpreters, compilers, actually preserve this meaning, preserve this semantics. Uh, at the same time, because these languages are simpler than the web programming languages that are used in uh, Ethereum, uh, they're also easier to analyze. And this means that, for instance, before we actually deploy a smart contract, we can analyze how much gas it will use. And this means that everyone using such a contract will know how much they need to pay in advance. So there's also a lot of uh, research of the analysis of smart contracts that will go into this. 
So one thing, we're, uh, basic research that we're doing here is building the infrastructure that allows us to um, have uh, smart contract languages with a clear semantics and with the tools actually uh, preserving the semantics. Finally, what we're doing is based on top of this, uh, this verification framework for these uh, uh, smart contracts with a clear meaning, we're now building a framework to prove things about individual projects, uh, individual smart contracts. That means that if you have uh, take out an insurance like this, you will not only be presented with a piece of code, but also with a proof that it actually sticks to the specification. So in this way, we can hope to build uh, a much safer blockchain, which indeed is provably secure, as you can see on the, uh, on the poster. So to sum up, uh, just to sum up what we've tried to say between the three of us, is uh, the research teams here in the Concordium Research, uh, Concordium Blockchain Research Center is peer-to-peer, -peer, um, the peer-to-peer -peer layer, distributed consensus, formal verification, smart contract languages, zero knowledge, cryptographic primitives, security models, and there's much more to come. For instance, education and collaboration with, uh, with other projects, other universities. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>